Hi everyone, I'm Sabrina. Welcome to the S Factor Studio. I'm super excited to share this project. For months I have been wanting to make this project, um, but every the tutorials I was coming across were um, a lot of the tutorials were done by individuals that are woodworkers or they had um, a husband who was cutting the wood for them and those options are not, <laughs> I don't have those options available to me. Um, I work on a very basic level with wood and my husband is not a wood worker at all. And it's, it's kind of funny that every time I drag him into my projects and we end up having to go to Home Depot, we always get into it. Funny, but not funny. <laughs> so those options were not available to me. So I kept, um, kept searching and thinking to figure out how I could do this project um, according to my skill set. So I'm super excited to show um, my process for making my first noodle board, also known as a stove top cover. I wanted to share, I think it's important to know, I have <laughs> I've mentioned before my, um, my chaos with trying DIYs and following certain tutorials. Um, I have found for me that when I go into a DIY understanding that I'm going to have to adjust it to the materials the re and the resources available to me as well as to my skill set, um, I find that I have much more success. So if you are like me and you have, you have difficulties with DIYs, remember, remember that, that you'll have to adjust it to what's available to you. DIY is doing it yourself. You're not doing it my way. Um, you're not doing it somebody else's way. Do it yourself. Do it your way. So I'm hoping that you'll be inspired. This really is an easy project. I've heard people say over and over again it was easy, an easy project. And <laughs> I hear that. And when I try it, I come across my little hiccups and challenges. So I'm hoping that um, showing my process here will inspire you and you can either follow along with everything I've done or just adjust it to your particular skill set and resources. To make this noodle board, all you need is one piece of wood. However, I had to buy a second piece of wood and I'll explain why in a second. So this is a one by six by 12 foot piece of wood and you can see the uh, the barcode and the measurement there. As I mentioned, my husband doesn't woodwork and nor do we have the tools for cutting wood, but I had heard before that Home Depot cuts wood for you. And a couple weeks ago, my daughter-in-law and I went into Home Depot doing another project and we had them cut some MDF for us. So yes, Home Depot does cut wood for you, or at least my local one does. So this one by six by 12 foot, I had them cut four boards at 30 inches each. This particular noodle board is for a flat top, standard 30 by 22 inch stove top. So make sure you measure your stove top to, um, to adjust your board to the measurements of your stove top. This can also be made on a gas range. You would just have to probably adjust the measurements and add um, a small trim on the bottom so that the board will stand up above the gas, um, the eyes, the grates of those gas eyes on the stove. But it can be done. This is for a flat top standard 30 by 22. So this one board, we have four pieces cut to 30 inches each. The piece that was left over was 24 inches. I had them cut it down to 22 inches. Here is where I came <laughs> to my little hiccup. So this piece at 22 inches, I needed cut along the grain long ways. So I needed it split in half 
which would make the two, what I'm calling arms, the two arms or the two side pieces for the board, for the, um, for the stove top cover. However, they don't do that. Home Depot doesn't cut. They don't split the wood this way. So technically this one board is all that's needed to make the stove top cover, but since they wouldn't cut this piece for me, I had to buy another piece of wood. And this is the piece that I bought. And this is a, it's listed as a one by three, but you can see here, it's a three quarters by two and a half by six feet. And so I had them cut this piece into three pieces at 22 inches. And then that left me with one six inch piece. Of course, I'm only going to use two of these. This is how this would be assembled. All right, so I'm just going to position Say you have one, two, three, and this one up here, four pieces, and then your two side pieces will go on the sides. Very simple, very easy. Okay, so I also have these two handles that I got from Hobby Lobby in the, uh, the wall decor section. And these screw in from the top. So these will be my handles that will go there. I got a countersink set of bits from my drill. And I'll explain that in a second. Some screws. And some wood glue. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sand all of these pieces before I assemble and after I assemble just to get some of these um, some of the rough edges there's a couple of rough edges here that need to be smoothed out my beautiful board has a crack and it's from one end to the other since this noodle board is for me is for my home I'm going to keep it the crack is not if you look here, like the crack is not very deep down. It's on the top, but it's a crack nevertheless. So when you are selecting your board, be sure that you check and make sure that there are no cracks. What I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna attempt to just put some wood glue. I'm gonna smush some wood glue in there and then I'm gonna clamp. I'm gonna put a clamp on it like I said, it, it's not a deep crack, but I'm just trying to um, trying to assure that later this this whole piece up here doesn't crack off. I'm going to put the wood glue into this crack, and then um, I only have one clamp, so I'm going to use that one clamp. This is a so here we go. This is another hiccup that I didn't even expect. I discovered this as I was beginning to do this video. So I'm gonna do that first. After I do that, I'm gonna sand all of the pieces and then I will show you how I'm going to assemble these. So the glue has dried and I'm not sure if it's really going to help this situation or not. You can see the crack is literally all the way across, but I filled it with glue and the glue has dried. So now I'm just, I'm gonna take my sander. Um, if you see some of, if you see the edges here, I'm just gonna lightly sand over the edges to kind of smooth them out just a little bit. Everyone that I've seen, they, they did not glue these boards together. However, I'm gonna put a tiny little bit of glue because I always get worried. I'm going to put just a little bit of glue on each of the ends. Let me see. Let me see. So this is still the um, the clamp that I have on. And so this is the left side of the board. I'm going to take one of these side pieces that I keep calling arms. So I'm taking one of these side pieces and I'm just going to put the wood glue on it and line it up to the top, bottom, and the edge. I'm gonna line it up and just glue it. 
onto um, the sides of the board. This wood glue, this is the Gorilla Wood Glue. The wood glue says to clamp your pieces together for 30 minutes and to allow the glue to dry for 24 hours. I didn't have clamps for these side pieces, so I just put some random heavy objects <laughs> on top of them. These boards here have been clamped and I left them clamped and the, the objects I did that for 30, not 30 minutes, it's, it's been over an hour. So I'm actually going to secure these, these side pieces further with screws. So I'm going to, I'm turning this over to the back side. Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put screws, two screws, in each of the panels on each side of the board. I learned about a counter sink bit, a drill bit. And what that does, what the counter sink drill bit does is it creates this um, recess so that when you screw the screw into the wood the the head where am I the head of the screw will actually be in that recess as opposed to sitting on top of the actual piece of wood and so I got these I got these right this Ryobi set and if you see here that's the that's the drill bit that drills a hole and then this piece around it that's the countersink bit. I went ahead and I drilled the holes and then my electric screwdriver was not charged so I just used a Phillips head screwdriver and screwed all the screws in. I used a one and one quarter inch screw. Um, I lightly sanded over it again on the back and on the front. And now I'm going to go ahead and use a stain. I have three different Dixie Belle stains. I'm not sure if the color is coming through. This is, I think, is Tobacco Road. This is Up in Smoke. And I think this one is called Temptress. I can't remember. This is really, really pretty, but it's too bright um, for my kitchen. So I'm going to go ahead and use this up in smoke and then I'll figure out how many coats I want to do for however, um, however dark I would like the color to be. So that's this right here and this is a water-based stain. This, this is the board, this is the final board. It has been sanded, um, stained, and sealed. And I went ahead and put the handlebars on. And the last part for me is to go ahead and decide what uh, transfer or stencil I'm gonna make to go ahead and um, finish decorating the front. Once I do that, I'll come back and show the completely finished board but this is this is it this is the back so that's the back and this is the front and I'll come back and show once I've um, put whatever sentiment I'm gonna put on the front so here's the board completed um, I'm holding the camera just to try to get a 
better angle. This is the board assembled, sanded, stained, decorated, and sealed. Um, I added just these little wood piece elements to add a couple of words I wanted on the on the arms of the board. Um, this is a decorative piece. These boards can be sealed with like mineral oil, walnut oil, or um, what's the other one? Beeswax to make them food safe. But mine is pretty much decorative just to cover the stove top and to use as a tray. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day and God bless. Bye.